Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another lesson on um, grade 12 physics. This one is titled Rotating Frames of Reference. And this just extends our knowledge of uh, non-inertial frames of reference. So um, we often find ourselves in a rotating frame of reference without knowing it. And um, this occurs when we take a perspective from within a frame of reference that is in circular motion. And we know that in circular motion, even though speed remains constant, there is an acceleration pointed in the direction of the center of the circle. And as there is an acceleration, we know that uh, this must be, or this can be looked at as a non-inertial frame of reference because there is that acceleration. So let's take a look at an example here. So um, if you're driving in a car around um, a ramp, an on-ramp to the 401, um, it would look something like this. So this is a, a top-down view here's the car, you can see it's four tires, and you're sitting inside the car uh, in the front passenger seat. So let's imagine that that purple dot is you. Now as the car travels in this direction, um, you can imagine what you would feel. Uh, and what you would feel is a force pulling you out of the car. And we've all felt this before, and you end up maybe leaning against the side of the car or the door. And uh, this is one of the reasons that cars have an automatic locking mechanism so that that door won't open on you. Um, this is often called a centrifugal force. And it is often considered to be a fictitious force. Uh, depending on who you are and how you study physics, this may not be considered any more fictitious than any other force. It is considered an inertial force. The centrifugal force is the force of your own inertia. As the car tries to turn to the left, your body, with its inertia, wants to continue in a straight line. And it will continue in a straight line, which is why we need seatbelts. Um, and so your body wants to move in a straight line, yet the car is cornering. And so the door is the external force that causes you to turn the corner. And so in reality, what we have here, and I'll change the color to do this, is we end up having a normal force pushing against you in that direction towards the center of the circle. So let's call this Fn, and we can consider it to be the force um, that's pushing against you uh, by the door uh, that keeps you moving in a circular motion instead of flying out of the car um, as it corners. Okay, well, so what? That's just a, a funny way of looking at um, a non-inertial frame of reference instead of looking at it as, as an Earth-based frame of reference. So let's look at another example here. And I've got two examples. So if you were to look at your free body diagram, you can draw force of gravity, Fg, pointing down. And you can draw the normal force, pointing up, Fn. And you would solve this in grade 11 very simply by saying the sum of the forces in this case is equal to mass times acceleration. And in this case, because there's no motion, you say this is equal to zero newtons. Okay. And if we came down here a little bit further, you could tell me that this is Fn plus Fg is equal to zero. And you would come up with the fact that Fn was equal to Fg. All right, just for interest's sake, let's say that this person has a mass equal to something around 70 kilograms. And what you would find, um, obviously, is that you take M times g, uh, and you would find that this person has a mass of 680, sorry, has a mass of 70 kilograms, and when you multiply it by g, um, you can solve for uh, the normal force, so you get 686 newtons up, and that's their normal force. And any grade 11 student uh, by now in the semester can certainly do that. That's very straightforward. Um, but let's take a look at it if we acknowledge that the Earth is actually uh, a sphere that's rotating. <clears throat> and in this case, in part B here, we have um, 
a radius, so the radius of the Earth is 6.3 times 10 to the 6 meters. And we also have, if we pretend that we're standing on the equator of the Earth, a rotational velocity, which is about 460 meters per second. So in this case, suddenly, things get a little bit different. Um, we can still draw the fact that there is Fg. And we can still draw the fact that there is Fn. But now our be equation becomes a little bit different. We say the sum of the forces, and now we have to say that this is centripetal, is equal to mass times centripetal acceleration is equal to mv squared all over r. And then the rest of our equation is, in fact, the same. We'll say that this is fg plus fn. Now, uh, we do something a little bit different here in that we're going to make this a positive value. Our fg in this case will be positive, and fn in this case will be negative because the acceleration, as we know, in a circular um, motion question is we always label our axes in the direction of the acceleration. So let's take a look at this. Um, and let's assume that the person still has a mass of 70 kilograms, so we'll end up, and I'm just going to move this back here a little bit, 70, which is our mass, times 460 meters per second, and we'll square that, divided by the radius of the Earth, which we have up here, and we'll call it 6.3, times 10 to the 6 meters, is equal to... Well, our force of gravity doesn't change. Um, it's going to be a um, positive value, and so it'll be uh, 70 times 9.8. We'll, and then we add that with our normal force. Okay. So if we go ahead and solve that value, um, we'll end up solving for this, which ends up being 2 point 3.5 newtons, not 0, as it was over in our other example, A, minus uh, 686 newtons will give us our normal force. And you're going to say, well, that's going to be negative. Yes, it is negative because we have, we have labeled our axes here such that down is positive towards the center of the uniform circular motion. And as the Earth is rotating, we are going to consider this to be a rotating frame of reference. And at the end of the day, what we end up with is that the normal force in this case is equal to 683.7 newtons with far too many significant digits. And we'll call that up. So you can see that in this case, there is a very slight difference in the normal force exerted on a body when we consider um, this as a rotating frame of reference versus when we consider this to be uh, a non-rotating or an inertial frame of reference. What is important to note here is that the reason we feel gravity is because of the normal force that's pushing back up on us. And as Einstein said, if there was no normal force, that is, if we were falling, we would not notice gravity. And he had this thought experiment where he thought about a, uh, a contractor across the way from him. If he fell off a roof, what would he feel? Well, he would feel that there was no gravity. And you can imagine that in an elevator, if you were going down in an elevator, you feel that gravity is lessened because the normal force on your feet pushing back is not as much. Another way that we often will look at a uh, rotating frame of reference is um, if we imagine, and maybe Elon Musk does this often, but if we imagine a space station, and if we have, and the space station is rotating in this direction, you can imagine a person or an astronaut standing in this space station, and they could be standing there on the side of the space station. Now keep in mind, because this is in in um, in space, uh, there is no external gravity. All there is is this rotating frame of reference. And to this person standing here, they can feel a, an artificial gravity because they have 
a normal force pushing on them. And that normal force is pushing on them towards the center of the circle. And it is causing them to feel that there is gravity because they're kind of stuck to the floor and a normal force is pushing up on them. What we really see is that this is a rotating frame of reference such that you could induce an artificial gravity and make astronauts quite comfortable if you regulated the velocity or the speed of that, um, of that rotation. So this is one way that we can calculate artificial forms of gravity on uh, space stations of various sizes and potentially put people in space in a very comfortable situation. And that concludes our lesson on rotating frames of reference and another form of non-inertial frames of reference.